Hello, this is Ken, your podcast preacher, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Feed My Lambs, Tend My Sheep, Feed My Sheep. This is a single episode, which will run a bit longer than the others. I thought that in this case, it should just be one message. So this morning I was prepping for the day and excited to start a new message for my over 200 in the queue just waiting to be birthed and given life by the Holy Spirit. But a thought popped into my head, or you could say a revelation of a conversation I was recalling in the Bible. It comes from the book of John. And so while but in this story, in the past, I have focused on the theme of Jesus restoring Peter in this moment. I have also taught on the revelation that Jesus broke the curse that Peter had invoked when he promised Jesus, yes, even swore that he would never reject him. You can find this in Matthew 26, 31, 36. Now we know as we inquire of Luke that Peter didn't hold to his promise, but, and as is the case with many of us, was found wanting and in lack of what he would have needed in order to keep that promise to Jesus. You can read about that in Luke 25, 54, 62. You see, friends and family will always say that they would die for you until death knocks. Then they put on their Nikes to catch some air. (laughs) But so now, you should know that Jesus doesn't leave us in our messes and our broken promises made in arrogance. It is here that we pick up a part of the point of this message. But before we do, I want to address your question as to how Peter had cursed himself in this story. One, he was operating in pride, which is sin. He broke his promise and it was a cockle-doodle-doo in three-part harmony that sealed the curse. Sin opens the door so much so that Satan doesn't even have to knock. You can read Luke 22, 30, 32, and see that Jesus already knew what Peter was in for. Okay, so let's go to the shores of curse-breaking and see how Peter was restored. John 21, 15, 17. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. In 1 John 2, 13, 14, it states, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young man, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. So now this is a turn in the story based on this morning's revelation. Now if we step back in time, we get back to my thoughts on the condition of the church and how it is that we got here or there. What we focus on in today's church to a fault, and I say to a fault because I have seen when the storm comes, and it will surely come, that if you are running for the things of God, that many are washed away in the torrents of attacks, testing, persecutions, and the like. And in these times, I have sat back and asked how such a thing could happen. It is an imbalance of focus that leads the church to eventually come apart. We spend so much time telling the lambs to preach the gospel and invite the whole forest of animals to the church, that when the church, which is now half full of wolves, get hungry, they feed on the ill-equipped lambs and sheep. In some of my previous messages, you have heard my thoughts on why we don't invite unbelievers to church, and that it is not in the Bible that we do so. You have also heard my heart and passion for equipping the saints for the work of ministry and for teaching them to make disciples and to be disciples who remain. Ephesians 4, 11, 16, and John 15, 16. As I was thinking about the feed, ten, feed conversation Jesus had with Peter, This little line popped into my head. A convert is not saved from hell if you cannot grow them. Let's chat with the commissioner for a minute to see where we might get a bit sideways 
on this Christian growth thing. Mark 16, 17, 20. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Let's see what Matt has to say. 28, 18, 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now, so how does Mark and Matthew line up with Jesus' fireside story as recounted by John? Let's see what Jesus is asking Peter to do in light of the Great Commission. My first thought on this is to define some of the words Jesus used in John so that we have context and perhaps even get more revelation of the power of this beachside moment. Let's decom. Feed. Feeding. To give food to. Supply with nourishment. To feed a child. To yield or serve as food for, example, this land has fed ten generations. To take food. Eat. Cows feeding in a meadow to feed well, to be nourished or gratified, subsist, to feed on grass, to feed on thoughts, food, especially for farm animals as cattle, horses, or chickens, an allowance, portion, or supply of such food. So the words that stuck out to me when reading this definition of feeding is supply with nourishment, to feed well, and an allowance, portion, or supply of such food. I see that Jesus' use of the word feed is loaded with what I call helps. We could say that Jesus was telling Peter to care for the lambs and sheep by providing them nourishment from his word to ensure that they are fed or nourished well, to give them their portion and supply of food. Now let's see what tend means. Tend. To be disposed or inclined in action, operation, or effect to do something. The particles tend to unite to be disposed towards an idea, emotion, way of thinking, to lead or conduce as to some result or resulting condition. I know, what does conduce mean? It means to lead or contribute to a result. I would even go so far as to say it means to teach. To be inclined to or have a tendency towards a particular quality, state, or degree. To lead or be directed in a particular direction. So the words that stuck out to me when reading this definition of tending is action, operation, or effect to do something, to be disposed towards an idea, a way of thinking, lead or conduce, to teach, and to be directed in a particular direction. So we can see that Jesus was, in essence, instructing Peter to take action with the sheep, with those who have grown up a little, as he did not mention lambs in this instruction to Peter. Teach the gospel, Peter. You see it? to be disposed towards an idea, a way of thinking, to teach and to be directed or strategic in your approach. Now we go to lamb, a young sheep, a person who is gentle, meek, innocent, etc. A person who is easily cheated or outsmarted, especially an inexperienced speculator, the lamb Christ. So the words that stuck out to me when reading this definition of lamb is a young sheep, a person who is Gentile, meek, innocent, and the Lamb who is Christ. Interesting thing here is that it looks like Jesus was defining himself. Did he first not mention to Peter to feed his lambs? And couldn't we say that Jesus was talking about those like him, those who were called according to his purpose? Yes, by golly, he was and did. I also like the term innocent in this definition because it applies to more than just what we know it to be referring to and that is that a person who is tender and even perhaps somewhat naive, unpolluted by the things of this world. Oh, would I, could I walk in a holy unpollutedness? The other thing is that this term is making a declaration that he, Jesus, is truly innocent. He is innocent and innocent. I bet you didn't know the word lamb was so rich, eh? 
So let's go to the biggins. Sheep. Any of numerous ruminant mammals of the genus Ovis, of the family Bovidae, closely related to the goats, especially O. Ares, bred in a number of domesticated varieties. Leather made from skin of these animals, a meek, unimaginative, or easily led person. So the words that stuck out to me when reading this definition, a sheep is closely related to the goats, a meek and easily led person. So a scripture popped into my mind as I read the part that states, closely related to the goats. Nope, it is probably not the one you might have thought about. You know, the sheep and goat story found in Matthew 25, 31, 46. Yippee, nope, nope. Peter, what say you? In 418, he says, Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Hmm. Hey, Ken, what does this have to do with sheep? Well, you see, and I thank you for asking. So the definition of sheep is in part that sheep are a lot like goats. Okay, so sinners and those who have been saved are still very much alike. Knowing this can keep you from pride and arrogance. We preach to the goats and teach and equip the sheep. One thing for sure is that we know goats like to bump heads with each other. So be careful as a sheep that you know the difference between sheep and goat behavior. After all, you are scarcely saved, if at all. And if not, then get scarcely saved and shed your goat skin and put on the wool. So we see how different Jesus' instructions were to Peter. Jesus specifically told Peter to focus on those who are his, that is, those who belong to Jesus. Jesus is preaching Ephesians 4, 11, 16 and John 15, 16 to him, not Matthew and Mark, on his own command to preach the gospel to every creature. Now, for whatever reason, we tend to find babies cast on the lawns because we Christians like to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Jesus did not say, and is not saying, that we shouldn't preach the gospel. If we believe this, then we have swung too far the other way. If all we do is teach and equip, we will run out of the lambs to feed. All I am saying is that we are losing too many lambs because we are starving them. They are not being well nourished. Now again, if you have a revival producing a Book of Acts church, then by all means teach the rest of us. But if not, then join the movement to improve our standing on this rock. Now in finishing, I was thinking about the how question. How do we ensure we are taking care of the young children and babies, young men and women, and fathers and mothers of the house? You consider the whole pie when churching your peeps. Your church should be able to care for all of these people groups. Children should not be doing big people stuff in church. You will never be desperate enough to build a church in such a manner. The price is too high. I have seen the cost and I would invite you to hear some commentary on that season in my last church, but it is no longer on the planet. But so now the lessons were invaluable for those of us who remained in him in spite of the difficulties. Moral of the story, don't tend to or feed those who are not his. Allow God to add to the church daily those who are being saved. And for your sakes, put the circus away and get the Holy Spirit on the phone and ask him back into your dry bone powdered milk services. You know I love you. And yes, by the way, he, that is Jesus, broke the curse over Peter's life by repeating three times to Peter what he should do for those who are his. Like an onion, and I know it, this one story has many layers of revelation. Well, that's it for today. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, still, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of life to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.